Jason Sams with Radio Control Car Action, and I'm here with uh, Team VTX's Garen Hagobian. Garen's a longtime racer. He's been an avid on-road racer for probably 20 years or so, right, Garen? Yeah, just about. So thanks for joining us, Garen. Thank you. So what do you have here? Uh, this is a uh, prototype uh, of our new uh, almost ready-to-run buggy that'll be coming out uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, it's based on our ready-to-run B1 buggy and um, what you see is pretty much what you'll get in the box. Uh, it's a pretty much replica of the ready-to-run minus electronics and radio. Uh, you'll get a clear body, you'll get medial pro tires, some graphite option parts, and uh, it'll come set up straight from the factory ready to hit the track. Um, and uh, features a couple of new parts that the new ready-to-runs will have, uh, just some minor details like new engine mounts that'll fit uh, no Rossi engines and just about any other engine out there. Um, and a couple of other minor changes, but uh, uh, it'll be priced competitively. Uh, look for about a street price of about two fifty. Two fifty? Uh, yeah, about two fifty. It's gonna be a race roller completely built. Race roller built, ready to go. Just drop in your radio, uh, drop in your motor, paint the body, and uh, good to go. So great. So you're still an avid racer. You race yep. predominantly on road, right? Yep. What is it? Eight scale that you race? Eight scale on road, and uh, it's fun. That's what I like. Yeah. So yeah. what car are you running these days? Um, I drive a Matonica. Yeah. I have one that's uh, kind of in parts here, but. Uh, that's basically what the chassis looks like. Uh, the rear suspension's just about all done, minus the shocks. But uh, as you can see, the rest of the car isn't quite put together yet. But uh, this is a car that's made in Italy. It's a new company. It's about two years old. Uh, at the World Championships a couple weeks ago, they put one in the main. They, they finished tenth at the Worlds. Oh wow, that's impressive. Uh, which is pretty impressive, considering it was their first Worlds and the level of competition there. Sure. Um, uh, so that's a good accomplishment for them. So, did, now did you choose this car because it's something different? It's not one of the main brands, and you kind of like running stuff that's different. Or, yeah. Or did you just hear good things about the car online, and um, you're like, "That's the car I want to run." Or? A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, uh, I've run all the different cars out there. I've run Serpent. I've run Kyosho. I've driven a Mugen. Um, they're all good cars. All the cars. All the you know the the, the, the main brand name cars. They're all good quality cars. But uh, I want to try something different and. Um, this car certainly is different. It's completely different in design. The suspension is completely unique, and uh, you can see how low profile the, the fuel tank is. Yeah, that is pretty high. Uh, it's got a pretty unique radio tray, which is keeps all the servos and the receiver very low and uh, very compact. So uh, I wanted to try something else, and uh, it's it's a good car. Oh, it's a very good. good car. Well, let's move on a little bit about the <clears throat> the state of racing. You're an auto racer. Where do you think racing is? Where do you think it may go? What do you like about racing? Anything that you want to talk about? I like about the competition of racing. Um, I like, you know, uh, it's it's fun. Uh, I, I like personally racing nitro on-road. I don't really care much for off-road racing. Um, so I can't really speak much for off-road nitro or electric racing. I can speak for nitro racing because that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 10 years plus. Yeah. Um, nitro racing is, uh, it's had its ups and downs. Um, I think right now it's maybe on a downswing or at least the tail end of its downswing. Uh, Why do you think that is? I'm not quite sure. It could just be the economy. It could be travel costs or more gas costs. More, you know, it's just costs more to drive somewhere. Uh, the cars certainly haven't gotten that much more expensive. Engines are pretty stable in pricing. Parts are pretty stable. But uh, you know, three four years ago we'd go to a race and have 200 guys there. Now you're lucky to get 100. Really? But um, it's starting to pick up again. It's definitely. A couple of years ago, I think, is when it kind of, you know, peaked out. Peaked out. Well, peaked out at the bottom, you know, kind of okay. on the on the downswing. But uh, I think it's picking back up, and uh, there's more and more people getting into it. There's more brands of nitro touring cars. There's more brands of eight scale cars. So you have more of a choice. And that's good uh, for racing, you think? It's very good for racing. I think anytime you have more competition, it's 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 good all around. It's good for the manufacturers. It's also good for the consumer. Now, do you think anything with the venues or the racing format or? Anything that an actual event should be changed to try and entice more racers or to try and grow the hobby or grow that side of the hobby? Um, I think depending on the, the level or the scale of the race, uh, I think sportsman classes are always a good idea. Um, if, if I was uh, you know, if I was new to this hobby and I had to go to a race where I had to pay my way and pay for the hotel and all that, uh, I'd be a little intimidated if I knew I was going to run for 10 minutes on Sunday or if I had to race against the, the top drivers in the world or you know in the country or the region or whatever. But yeah. um, uh, I think sportsman class, more of a grassroots kind of kind of push, parking lot races, that kind of thing, uh, is uh, is a good thing. 
these these cars require big tracks, and tracks require big pieces of land, and land is expensive depending sure. on where you are. So um, uh, I can appreciate what track owners go go through. Um, I think what a lot of track owners and operators have to deal with most of the public never sees or understands, and sure, the they get the beat CD up on the you know they get beat up on the internet, but. Um, uh, that's just you know part of the game. You have to accept that yeah. and uh, do the best you can. So uh, there's a handful of really good tracks in the U.S. Uh, we have one or two in Southern California. Uh, uh, there's a couple of really good facilities in, in Texas. There's a couple of really 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 nice facilities in uh, Florida. Um, I haven't yet been there, but uh, in Washington D.C. the 30 or near Washington D.C. the 301 Raceway, from what I hear, is, is a phenomenal facility. Yeah. So hopefully one day I can go out there and check that out. General uh, Team BTX, we're a new company, and um, check out our website. Ask for it at your local shop. We have uh, good products, and um, we have what I consider to be pretty good customer support. At least that's what I'm told by our customers, and uh, uh, we back up our product. So uh, uh, you know, so. Uh, it seems it, like enjoy it and uh, have fun with it. Have fun racing. Yeah, it seems like it's relatively priced, and you can get into the hobby for yeah. next to nothing. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks, Garrett, for taking Thank the you. time to do this interview with us. Anytime. And uh, for more news or more info about Team VTX, you can check it out at rccaraction.com or team teambtx.com.